Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this particular video, we're going to figure out what four plus the square root of 12 squared is equal to. And uh, the answer is not going to be some uh, sort of decimal. So we want to put our calculators away, except for that one in between your uh, two ears, which is uh, better than AI. It's actually a supercomputer. So that's the uh, calculator that we want to use. So we're talking basic algebra here, okay? But here's the thing, a lot of you out there um, will have the right idea to uh, solve this problem or simplify this situation, but a lot of you are not going to finish all the steps. So I'm not going to tell you more other than that. Of course, you'll see how this works out here in a second. So make sure you finish out all the steps. And if you know how to do this, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm gonna show you the correct answer here in just one second. And then of course, I'm gonna show you all the steps necessary to simplify this expression. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so four plus the square root of 12, all of that squared, what is this equal to? Let's go ahead and take a look at the answer right now. The answer is 28 plus 16 times the square root of three. Okay, now some of you um, uh, very well could have been on the right track, but you didn't finish out the problem. So don't judge yourself yet whether in fact you were totally wrong. Could be that you were like partially right, but just like when you're um, working with fractions, uh, if you come up, uh, let's say you're doing some sort of fraction problem and you uh, come up with an answer like this, uh, 100 over 300. You're like, oh, I got the, uh, the right answer. It's 100 over 300. If you turn this into your teacher, they're not going to like that. Your teacher's gonna be like, uh, come on there, um, you know, math student, let's go get with the program. That's what they're gonna be thinking. They may not tell you that, they might, but that's what they're gonna be uh, saying to themselves. They want to see a simple answer, a simplified answer. Of course, you know, you wanna reduce this answer to one third. Now, some of you might be saying, well, who cares? As long as, uh, you know, it is the correct answer or equivalent, to the correct answer, it doesn't make a difference. Well, in mathematics, it does make a huge difference. Matter of fact, you will get answers wrong if they are not fully simplified. We want to work and um, we always want to simplify our expressions, our answers to their simplest form, okay? So anyways, that's kind of going to be one of the main uh, points of this uh, for this particular video. But if you got this right, that is fantastic. Let's go ahead and celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus, A 100% and multiple stars. So you could tell your friends and family that indeed you know how to work with simplifying radicals, okay? So that's partly what we're going to be uh, working with here. Um, and then also, knowing how to multiply uh, two binomials using the FOIL method or another method. Okay, so uh, these um, are all the steps that we have to take in order to fully simplify this problem. This is not gonna be that difficult, but let's go ahead and get into it right now. So the first thing we wanna do is uh, think of this in terms of the FOIL method. You don't have to use the FOIL method. The FOIL method, uh, this F-O-I-L stands for first, outer, inner, last. And it's a technique that you learn in basic algebra when you're multiplying one binomial times another binomial. Now, binomial is a two-term polynomial, so it has two uh, things like this, and here is another binomial. So when you have a binomial times another binomial, you can use this kind of specialized little procedure called the FOIL method. Okay, so I bring it up because it's a very common method taught in most algebra courses, but whether you use the FOIL method, as long as you know how to multiply polynomials, binomials times binomials, or a trinomial times binomial, you know, that's what we're talking about here, okay? Now, if you are struggling with polynomial multiplication, uh, check out like my Algebra 1 course, this uh, for anything that kind of confuses you uh, in this video. Okay, so let's go ahead and use the FOIL method. And first, we wanna write this uh, square, four plus the square root of 12 squared as uh, this times itself, because that's what it means to square something. Okay, so here we have four plus the square root of 12 
times 4 plus the square root of 12. This is what 4 plus the square root of 12 squared means. But now we have a binomial and we're multiplying it by itself or another binomial. Okay, so again, we're going to use this FOIL technique, first, outer, inner, last, and I uh, kind of already uh, wrote this out here. So for those of you that don't know the FOIL technique, this would be a good little review. So let's start with F. That's our first. So 4, you can see we're going to multiply it 4 times 4. These are the first terms of each of these respective binomials. That's the F. Okay. Now, the outer uh, is our next. That's our O. It gets us uh, this blue arc right here. So now it's the outer terms of these two binomials. So what are the two outer terms? It's 4 and square root of 12. Okay, so that's the outer. And then that brings us to the inner, okay, FOIL, F-O-I. So our inner terms are going to be these two right here. So the square root of 12 times 4. And then our last, F-O-I-L, is going, uh, going to be uh, the square root of 12. And I'm kind of erase this here, and the square root of 12, all right? So these are our last terms of uh, these respective uh, binomials. So if you understand that, uh, all you got to do is just follow this little uh, procedure and go ahead and do uh, each of this, um, each of the little uh, multiplications involved. But let's go ahead and do this right now. Okay, so FOIL method in action. Okay, so first would be what? 4 times 4, so that would be 16. Right, actually, let me use a different color here because I uh, took the time to make this color coded. You know, in my videos, I really tried to uh, uh, take the time to make things as clear as possible. So I do put a decent amount of effort into these videos. And if you like my YouTube videos and you're learning from me, I'm going to really encourage you to check out my full instruction in my math help program because that's a whole nother level. That's where I really kind of get into it. But uh, anyways, it's important to have things fully explained to you in math if you're really going to uh, you know, understand it. Okay, so F is uh, our first, right? So it's going to be 4 times 4, which of course is 16. So that's the F. Remember, we're kind of using this procedure, FOIL. So we just did the F. Now we're moving on to the outer, first, outer, inner, last. So that's going to be 4 times the square root of 12. So I'll write that as 4 times the square root of 12. So we did that. Oh, now we're moving on to I. So the inner is going to be square root of 12 times 4, which is going to be 4 times the square root of 12. So that's the inner. And then the last is going to be the square root of 12 times the square root of 12, which is going to be the square root of 144. All right, so when you're multiplying two square roots, you just multiply the numbers underneath the square roots. Okay, as long as they're both square roots, that's how you do it. So now we're going to go ahead and start to simplify this expression. So here we have 16, and then here we have 4 square root of 12 plus 4 square root of 12. Uh, so how many total square roots of 12 do we have? Well, you have 4 plus 4, or 8 square root of 12. Okay. So again, if you don't understand this, you want to uh, you know, learn um, everything about radical expressions and square roots. Really, really important stuff in algebra. Okay, so you have uh, 4 square root of 12s here, 4 square root of 12s here. In total, you have 8 square root of 12s. And then the square root of 144 is 12. Okay, that is a perfect square. So the square root of 144 is 12. And then here, we have 16 and we have 12. So these are two numbers. We can combine them. 16 and 12 is 28. And then you have 16 plus 8 square root of 12. Now, at this point, a lot of you uh, would say, oh, I'm done. Look at me, Mr. Math Teacher. Go ahead and give me my 100%. And, uh, you know, I'll be happy to, you know, turn in my quiz or test. Well, not so fast. This is the whole point of the video where you need to finish out the steps. Okay, so if you got this answer right here, I would say that's very good. Okay, now, uh, if this was a quiz and this was worth, worth 10 points, uh, I might give you like 7 out, of, 7 out of 10 points. And I might upset you. Mike, what are you talking about? Well, the whole, um, you know, uh, part or the whole point of the question like this is to see if you know how to, to uh, basically do a couple things. One, uh, use the FOIL technique to multiply a binomial times a binomial. Uh, two, seeing if you know how to combine uh, radicals together. Okay, you understand that. And three, knowing how to simplify uh, square roots and radicals. So we're going to have to now uh, take this to the next step. That's what I'm really kind of checking, 
in a problem like this. So what we want to do is look at this square root of 12 and, and ask ourselves, is there any perfect squares in here? Okay. Now, what are perfect square factors? Well, these would be numbers like 4, 9, 16, 25, etc. Because when I take the square root of these numbers, right, I take the square root of each of these here, I get these lovely little uh, nice whole numbers like 4, 3, up uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. Right? So you want to be looking for perfect squared factors. So when you look at 12, all right, this is a whole other conversation. Oh, I'm covering a lot. Again, to understand this, I have additional videos on my YouTube channel, and then of course, I teach this fully in my Algebra 1 course. Uh, but anyways, so we're going to look at 12. We're going to see if we can break it up into any uh, factors. Okay, now factors of 12 could be all sorts of things, like um, uh, 1 times 12 as factors, right? 2 times 6. But 1 and 12, 2 and 6, these are not perfect squares. Remember, perfect squares are 4, uh, 9, 16, 24. We're looking for these type of numbers, but we're like, oh, wait a minute, isn't 4 times 3? Uh, equal to 12? Yes. So I can think of the square root of 12 as a square root of 4 times 3, and uh, 4 is a perfect square factor. Now, the whole reason we want to do that is because we can break up this entire thing into two small square roots. So the square root of 4 times 3 is equal to the square root of 4 times the square root of 3, and the whole reason this is awesome is because now we can take the square root of 4. We know the square root of 4 is 2. So the square root of 12 is equal to 2 times the square root of 3, okay? Now, let's go ahead and see how this comes into play, because now here is our problem. We have 28 plus uh, 8 square root of 12. Well, we know the square root of 12 is equal to 2 times the square root of 3, so we're going to substitute that in. And so 8 times 2 square root of 3 is going to be 8 times 2, or 16 times the square root of 3. This is the full answer, fully simplified answer right here. Okay. Now, again, a lot of students don't finish out all the steps uh, for either one. They don't know uh, they weren't aware that they ha had to or they forgot that they had to or they simply just didn't know how to. Right. Or they thought that they were done. Uh, any way you slice it, your answer will be incomplete and, uh, you know, not uh, fully correct. So, you know, again, you know, when you're simplifying in mathematics, whether it's a, you know, a radical, a fraction, doesn't make a difference. You need to uh, finish out completely, right? That is uh, a big thing about mathematics. You need to fully simplify all the time, irrespective of what your, uh, type of math situation, uh, math situation you're dealing with, okay? All right, so hopefully this little video helped you out. If that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.